Hello friends and welcome to Vlogmas Day 23. You guys, it's Christmas Eve Eve and we are gonna have the coziest evening together. Monsieur Rue has already beat us to the punch. Of course, look at this dog. <laughs> oh, hello. Oh, he's so tired. Hello. <laughs> this sleepy bear. My only plans for today are to make gingerbread cookies and to read The Night Before Christmas because it's actually the 200th year anniversary of that poem. 200 years ago on December 23rd, The Night Before Christmas was published, which is just so magical, especially considering the timing. I am all about being excited for the holidays. I love getting excited for fall. I love getting excited for Christmas as early as possible. And also, I really appreciate that one of the most famous Christmas stories of all time was published two days before Christmas. Like nowadays, if you're writing a Christmas story or doing anything Christmassy, you have to be finished with it by August at the latest. Times were just so much simpler and slower 200 years ago. So I'm really, really looking forward to reading that tonight. And those are my only plans for the day. I also have to edit yesterday's video, which is the first thing I'm gonna do. So I'm gonna make it as cozy as possible in here. I do need an afternoon pick-me-up. I am craving a coffee. I don't normally drink coffee in the afternoons, but ooh, <laughs> I'm craving it and I could use an energy boost to get this edit done. So gonna make it as cozy as possible make myself a coffee, crank out yesterday's edit, and then enjoy an evening together. We're just gonna have a simple, slow, cozy, quality time evening together. And Landon's currently out mountain biking. He'll be home at some point, so I'm sure he'll join us as well. If that sounds good to you, go ahead and make yourselves a heartwarming cup of tea or coffee, grab your coziest of comfy blankets, and let's get to it. coffee drinker until two years ago now <laughs> hard to believe it's already been two years yeah I just always loved coffee culture like I love the smell of coffee I love how people wake up early and enjoy coffee and anytime I would spend time with family or friends or just be anywhere <laughs> where adults were awake in the morning uh, just that special quiet simple early morning with the smell of coffee. I think specifically about being with grandparents. I remember being a kid and waking up early with my grandparents and them just sitting and enjoying their coffee and reading the newspaper. That is just the kind of comfort that I feel when I drink coffee. Specifically homemade coffee. Like I love a coffee from a cafe. Obviously so delicious, but this is its own kind of taste and specialness. So now that I've rambled on about coffee, we can get on with our day. I seriously feel like I can talk about anything now with you guys and it's so freeing. Like I don't have to be impressive at all. I just get to be. And that has been one of the most wonderful gifts of Vlogmas. I can just talk about liking coffee. <laughs> so yeah, now that I have my heartwarming drink, I'm gonna join Rue on the couch. 
I'm gonna put a cozy fireplace on the TV. Now that we have a new TV, I'm gonna light some candles and I'm gonna get to work. Latte, oh although your horizontal position indicates that it could have been cabinet. <laughs> and a stone. Oh, stay, wow. Stay, stay, stay. Thank you so much. <laughs> okay, you guys, I won't lie. I got 20 minutes into editing and it was just so cozy in here. <laughs> and I was so sleepy. Even my coffee wasn't helping. And I decided to take a nap. And I laid down and I hit start on my timer to take a nap. And then I heard Landon approach <laughs> the door. He returned from his mountain biking adventure. With coffee. With coffee. That's so sweet. Mm -hmm. Cheers. It's decaf, so I can drink it. Did you make yourself a decaf cup? No, I made myself a regular. <laughs> and I talked about how great homemade coffee is, like it's its own special kind of great. And then you bring home a cafe coffee and I'm just so much more excited about it. Yeah, right? It's special. <laughs> yeah, it is. <laughs> it's from Nossa Familia, a Brazilian coffee cafe, coffee shop. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And they sponsor the bike team that I'm on. Yeah, look at this. Nossa Familia. Nossa Familia. Nossa, Nossa Familia. Familia. It means our family in Portuguese. <laughs> <laughs> I heard a thing on the radio about cookie cutters. How they can be used to predict current trends in society. So when Taylor Swift was popping off a guitar shape, that was like the most popular cookie cutter on Google search. Really? When Barbie was popping off, the most popular cookie cutters were lipstick and... Probably lips. Lips. <laughs> Who uh, knew that cookie cutters could be so... Um, predictive. Or such a reflection of the times. <laughs> yeah. This is my cookie cutter set that I found years ago at a Goodwill, and I store my gingerbread recipe in it that Ooh. I make every single year. I do love these cookies. And it's highlighted, ooh. I feel like I've grown so much in my baking abilities since the first time I made this. Prep time, 15 minutes. Cook time, 10 minutes. Total time, three hours and 25 minutes. <laughs> well, how does that, yeah. <laughs> Chill time, three hours, that's where they get you. Yeah, well no, you have to roll the dough and then put it in the fridge for hours and mm -hmm. then work it again. So maybe during the chill time we can go and look for Christmas lights. I would love that. Yeah. I would love the, that. We'll call this Christmas light hunting because we don't really know where we'll find them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we need all-purpose flour, baking powder, powdered ginger, cinnamon, ground cloves, ground nutmeg, salt, vegan butter, brown sugar, molasses, and vanilla extract. And then for the frosting, we need powdered sugar, vanilla extract, and water. I have all those things. I don't need to go to the grocery store or anything like that because I'm now one of those people who has a baking cupboard. Tea, baking. <laughs> <laughs> It's very simple. Red onion. Mm. 
Okay, I want honest feedback from Mo on what I think I'm gonna make for dinner while she gets to work on these gingerbread cookies. Okay, so ground beefless beef sauteed with red onion and cabbage with a lemon tahini sauce in pitas, toasted pitas. How does that sound? It sounds amazing. All right, it's simple, it's easy. Let's do it. All right, mm -hmm. somehow I'm gonna make gingerbread cookies while he cooks dinner and our kitchen is like the same height as Landon, space-wise, so. Get out of here. Hey. hey give me some elbow hey. room. Hey. Your shirt's very Lego. Very Lego. And my shirt's very Ski Lodge. Hey, I am a Lego man. And I'm a Ski Lodge woman. <laughs> <laughs> you do look very Nordic. Yeah, ooh, I like that. Yeah, very Nordic. Ooh. That's a Nordic sweater. Uh. Now you have to place the dough in the fridge for three hours. And I like to imagine that this is so that the dough comes to life <laughs> and the gingerbread men come to life. Meanwhile, look at these amazing. What is this? Penis sandwiches? I would sandwiches? call it like a gyro. Gyro, amazing land. <laughs> it's <Rue>. really hot. <laughs> Rue's here too. Our sous chef. Wow, that looks so good. Dude. <laughs> what? Give me a kiss. <laughs> Our family. Most familiar. Okay, so here's the deal. <laughs> the gingerbread needs to sit in the fridge for three hours, and three hours would put us at 10 p.m., which is just too late to joyfully make gingerbread cookies so the dough can sit in the fridge for three hours or up to two days so I've prepared it it's in the fridge and tomorrow we're just gonna really really enjoy making gingerbread cookies rather than rush the process to try and get to bed or be tired through it I just want to have fun and enjoy it slowly so we're gonna finish that tomorrow in the meantime I'm gonna put on some Christmas pajamas and Landon and I are gonna go find some Christmas lights Oh, that is spiffy. <laughs> this is my Dang. Christmas light watching attire. <laughs> it's a 12 year old meets grandma hybrid. Yes. <laughs> These are actual children's pajamas. They're awesome. <laughs> yeah. What do we got here? The little reindeer. Yes. <laughs> and then I love this cape so much and it matches my soul. And it really does, I think, have a hint of grandmotherly vibe. Oh, it really does, yes. <laughs> but it makes me so happy. I love it. For extra Christmas warmth, I've added a scarf to the ensemble. <laughs> I'm living my very best life. Okay, time to go. Let's go. <laughs> okay, Ru, let's go, bud. You are coming. To I know you really love lights. Christmas lights are Rue's favorite. Rudolph, the red harnessed rain dog. Oh, yeah, this way. Yeah, this way. Oh yeah, let's go. We found the Clark Christmas house. Yes. <laughs> oh, this almost this makes it. Yes. <laughs> There's oh, it's Rudolph. Ooh, wow. this is amazing. Tree. I've been looking for this one forever. 
You can see it all the way across the river when you're on the highway. I do love Christmas lights. <laughs> all right, on to find some more. Ah, that is a good one. Yeah. Thank you guys for yeah, that spirit. This is a joy. They got their whole family out there. A <laughs> snowman family. Hey everybody. Santa! Is that you? Hey Santa! Yeah, wow. I've never seen a willow tree lit up like that. That is so fun. That's so fun. Magical, honestly. It really is. I like that. I like that one a lot. Which one? The, the car one? The uh, second one, the one that we just passed. Uh, I like this one. Oh, it's the leg lamp! <laughs> Wait, you gotta pull forward a little bit. <laughs> it's the leg lamp! <laughs> we're so creepy right now, actually. Oh my gosh, no, we're not creepy. If you have a leg lamp, people stop and point. Like, come on. <laughs> <laughs> There's some coming up that we can show you. Wow, that house. Oh my gosh. That is beautiful. Oh my goodness, it's the Home Alone house. Excuse us while we no keep going, keep oh going, these people. <laughs> it's so oh, beautiful. Man. We are back from Christmas lights, and that was so fun. Christmas lights are up there with Christmas music as far as things that make me feel the excitement of Christmas magic or my childhood magic. And I wanted to end the night by reading. The Night Before Christmas, the classic edition by Clement C. Moore because it is the 200 year anniversary on which this was published, 1823, December 23rd. How incredible is that? It feels extra magical. And I had a crazy idea, you guys. What if I actually read this aloud with you right here, right now? I made the living room really cozy. Rue's curled up sleeping. We have the TV fire going on in the fireplace. The candles are lit. The Christmas tree is on. Somewhere I have a steaming mug of Christmas Eve tea. I've got my bathrobe on and my cozy Christmas pajamas. How about it? Let's read this Christmas poem together and feel a bit of Christmas magic. The Night Before Christmas, the classic edition by Clement C. Moore, illustrated by Charles Santor. To Major Henry Livingston, Jr., 1748 to 1828, C.S. Account of a visit from St. Nicholas by Anonymous, as published in the Troy Sentinel on December 23rd, 1823. "'Twas the night before Christmas, when all through the house "'not a creature was stirring, not even a mouse. "'The stockings were hung by the chimney with care, "'in hopes that St. Nicholas soon would be there. "'The children were nestled all snug in their beds, "'while visions of sugar plums danced in their heads. "'And Mama and her kerchief and I and my cap "'had just settled down for a long winter's nap. When out on the lawn there arose such a clatter, I sprang from my bed to see what was the matter. Away to the windows I flew like a flash, tore open the shutters, and threw up the sash. This page folds out. Oh, this is so cool. The moon on the breast of the new fallen snow gave the luster of midday to objects below. When what to my wandering eyes should appear but a miniature sled and eight tiny reindeer? With a little old driver so lively and quick, I knew in a moment it must be St. Nick. More rapid than eagles his coursers they came, and he whistled and shouted and called them by name. Now Dasher, now Dancer, now Prancer, now Vixen, on Comet, on Cupid, on Donner and Blitzen. To the top of the porch, to the top of the wall, now dash away, dash away, dash away all. As dry leaves that before the wild hurricane fly, when they meet with an obstacle, mount to the sky. So up the housetop the coursers they flew, with the sleigh full of toys, and St. Nicholas too. 
And then in a twinkling I heard on the roof the prancing and pawing of each little hoof. As I drew in my head and was turning around, down the chimney St. Nicholas came with a bound. He was dressed in all fur from his head to his foot, and his clothes were all tarnished with ashes and soot. A bundle of toys he had flung on his back, and he looked like a peddler just opening his pack. His eyes how they twinkled, his dimples how merry, his cheeks were like roses, his nose like a cherry. His droll little mouth was drawn up like a bow, and the beard on his chin was as white as the snow. The stump of a pipe he held tight in his teeth, and the smoke it encircled his head like a wreath. He had a broad face and a little round belly that shook when he laughed like a bowl full of jelly. Ho, ho, ho. He was chubby and plump, a right jolly old elf, and I laughed when I saw him in spite of myself. A wink of his eye and a twist of his head soon gave me to know I had nothing to dread. He spoke not a word, but went straight to his work and filled all the stockings, then turned with a jerk. And laying his finger aside of his nose and giving a nod up the chimney he rose. He sprang to his sleigh, to his team gave a whistle, and away they all flew like the down of a thistle. But I heard him exclaim ere he drove out of sight, Merry Christmas to all and to all a good night. Well, friends, have very sweet, magical, Christmassy dreams. I will see you again tomorrow, and I love you so incredibly much. Hi, Morgan. Uh, this is Brianna calling from Texas. I wanted to call in last time, but I was, uh, I was too nervous. Um, but you can share this message, by the way. Um, I also would love to share pictures of our tiny house with you guys sometime. I know when I joined the peppermint tier um, a bit ago, I mentioned having a tiny house, and I think Landon was interested in some pictures. I'd even share a video chat of the tour of the house <laughs> if you guys wanted that. Um, but what I wanted to share was, I just got um, back home from seeing my family in Arizona, and uh, I came home so I can enjoy some holiday traditions with my husband, uh, who was in the military, so I really feel for the time that you guys, uh, you and Landon, spent time apart, but also grew together as individuals at the same time. This is one of the first years I actually cried in front of my family when saying bye. Um, I usually hold it in. But it's, it's really a beautiful thing to miss people and have it be reciprocated. So for anyone out there who also gets teary-eyed when they say goodbye to family, you know, it's not silly to have the big feeling. And um, it also means that you're alive and that you have people to miss, and that's so beautiful. Um, and one last thing that I wanted to say, I say this to my students when I was a TA um, in graduate school. Um, at the end of the semester, which is, if no one has told you this year, know that I am so proud of you, proud of you for being here, proud of you for making it to 2024. So for anybody listening in, just know that one little person in Texas is so proud of you. Um, happy holidays and goodbye.